Hello, Goranges are on view, this time for our sale on the 31st of January. And it's a bit fresh in here at the moment, you can't quite see my breath, but the, the boiler packed up uh, a week ago, so um, it's a little bit fresh, but it's been new ones being fitted today. So should you be coming along, be nice and warm by the time the sale is formally on view. So another random selection of things that sort of come out of the woodwork for all different reasons. And so I'll just sort of pick a few out and, and, and show you what we've got. It includes um, a, a little run of assorted uh, gold coins, such as lot 1878. This is a, um, a George III sovereign produced from 1821 to 1825, it says. It's actually dated 1822, and it's actually been issued by the London Mint Office. So it's got its certificate and capsule and fancy wooden box and what have you. And we've got a number of other coins in the sale, all similarly presented of varying ages and sizes and qualities. So, for instance, there's a 2002 half sovereign, again with its certificate and what have you. If you're looking to buy gold coins, it's probably about the most inexpensive way to do it. You know, you're sort of paying pretty much the scrap value for them, usually, unless they're, unless they're rare. But if they're relatively recent or very, relatively common, it's just a good way of, if you wish to invest in gold, it's a good way to do it and sort of not incur the additional expenses that can happen. So have a look at those gold coins, if they're your sort of thing. How about a fancy clock? Look at this. This is lot 1450. Sort of, we see a lot of these red bull uh, mantle clocks around. Um, this one is sort of the, sort of contrabull in a way that the brass is sort of more um, to the foreground than the than the red tortoise shell. Uh, so looks on the face of it pretty good. A little bit of rubbing and losses here to the tortoise shell. A little bit of brass springing up on the side. It's kind of inevitable with these things. It dates to around about 1900, 1910. Um, looking at the back, we've got nice clean uh, AD Mougin movement. It's signed on the, the, the stamp there. The little sort of medallion tells us it's Mougin. It says Paris, not made in Paris. So that's suggesting it's pre-1910. Um, it's got its pendulum, doesn't have a key, but it wouldn't be hard to get hands on one. All looks ready to go. Uh, estimates two to three hundred, might make a little more, but a uh, nice clean clock that, if that's your if that's your thing. What else have we got behind here? Well, there's some dinky super toys, there's some models of cats. So we are, 1470, that's a Barham, the, the, the um, Devonshire factory cat, in with a little Dalton one. Won't be any money, 20, 30 quid, I should think. Uh, further around here, let me come around and see what I can find. Uh, what was I looking at earlier? Oh, yeah, down here, this is curious. So, lurking in amongst the schools is this bronze head with a plaque saying, The Willisham Wonder by Teddy Palmer, Midsummer 1948. So, he looks like a sportsman, doesn't he? He looks like he could be a rugby player or something like that. Anyway, we googled him and he was a footballer, but uh. As far as our inquiries went, which wasn't incredibly in depth, uh, I didn't actually see which team he played for. But anyway, the Withersham wonderful. Maybe he played for Withersham. I don't know. Uh, that makes sense, wouldn't it? Lot thirteen fifty six. There we go. Uh, prices on the internet vary, but we'll have our own estimate on it, which we'll we'll show you uh, in due course. Uh, otherwise, things like magic lanterns, lot thirteen fifty three. Swathes of wine to be looked at. Chinese vase stands, quite a few lots of those, always popular with the Chinese buyers. Coming back round and uh, endeavouring to talk to you, not, not turn my back on you. Uh, oh, here we go. This is a few curiosities. So here, this is um, a Minton cabinet plate, really. I mean, it's not really ever made for use. That's made just to sit in a cabinet and look smart. Um, it's got the Minton's mark upon it. England stamp. So after 1890, somewhere buried in there will be a date code. You get the exact year it was made. And then the central decoration uh, called pat to pat decoration. So one layers up very thin layers of porcelain and builds them up and you get this translucent effect. The main guy who's famous for doing it was a chap called Solon, Louis Solon. I, uh, I, I can't see that this one is signed by him, but um, he, he a lot of it gets attributed to him regardless. That's not 1440. Uh, used to make lots of money, not so much these days. Along here, 148, this caught my eye. And initially I thought, cool, oh, that's, that's unusual, you know, a, a Delft bowl decorated with Nelson. Um, but then I spun it around and saw that it's got a galleon on it, which seems a little bit inappropriate. I mean, a frigate 
or such thing yes but but a galleon mm, don't know and then the floral decoration so i think this is in the in the manner of but it's not as old as we'd like it to be I and mean, it's old enough to have fritted but then this sort of material does damage very easily but one four three eight there we go it's, it's a nelson bowl but i think not as not as not period should we say uh further on down the line some glassware some bronzes all sorts of ceramics and uh, oh yeah, lurking down here at the back, if I move, the, well, first of all, 1391, look at these rather nice little silkwork panels, pair of them, I think they faded away, look, there was a figure, there is a figure lurking in there, in the gloom of the grotto, um, he's a hermit, I suspect, you can look at the back of them, rather nice to see how they've been arrived at, so a pair of those, 1391, I caught my eye, but here, tucked away around the back, look at this, Lot 1392, rather smart skeleton clock there. Look at that, that's Victorian, as is often the way, not signed anywhere. Um, sometimes they tuck a signature and numbering away on the frame, but no, nothing to say who made it. Single fusée with the chain running through, the original pendulum at the back. Dial's a bit oxidised, but overall that looks to be in rather nice original condition. So uh, if you fancy a skeleton clock, you could do worse than that one. It's always something tucked away here, some treasures. So, uh, as I say, an interesting lot in the smalls. So we'll try and squeeze into the other room where, where some viewing's going on, but see if I can sort of squeeze in there and show you some of the furniture and paintings. Here in the main room, uh, some furniture laid out. This has been much admired. Look at this, 11.92. This um, half tester bed, Victorian. Nice that it's got its serpentine footboard and these sort of almost crown-like um, finials to the front. So kind of fun, that's bed. Um, it's, it's a little bit narrow, so that will keep the price down on it. But we have seen these going up generally as people buy them for their sort of Airbnb type rentals and that sort of thing. They also buy things like this. It's an ancient washing machine, lot 1194, which comes with two bedside cupboards. This is a curious lot, lot 12. Well, it says it does, but they've got different lot numbers on. It's a very gorange way that. So 11.94 says plus two cupboards, but I think this is on its own. And then 12.05, you've got a pair of bedside cupboards. It all will be revealed in the in the email that goes out. There's a nice George III wine cooler there. Uh, they're a cellarette when they've got a lid. When they're open, they're wine coolers, um, brass bound. Slightly ornate legs on it that, that perhaps are an embellishment, but anyway, there we go. And it comes with a little tub as well. And again, it's quite popular at the moment. So, um, does it have a lot number upon it? Yes, it does. Lot 1206. So, and one more thing for you, right? This lot 1679. Uh, interesting oil on canvas, come from a local property in Hove. Got a remnant of a label on the back saying Bernheim Jeune Gallery, who were a very good gallery and had all sorts of. Um, eminent artist's work. This is unsigned and the frame is 19th century so did it did it start life? Look that the fixings go in here but then it had other fixings down here so don't know whether they're married together whether the label ties into it but I think people will be interested in that. Lot 1679 keep your eye on that might be a nice surprise. Put in it we'll go over to the really cold warehouse and see what the furniture is doing there. So here we are over in the warehouse not too cold actually I'm pleased to tell you um, and, and the furniture, I mean, I've just got off the rostrum from selling furniture this morning and it's been going pretty well in the main. There's still some surprisingly cheap lots, but um, things like Victorian chairs and the like, but, but otherwise it's pretty strong. So what have I seen over here? Well, this looks fun. 1175 is um, a um, mule chest, but it's, it's nice, it's in pine. So it's got this lovely colour to it, this sort of lovely honey character to it. Bit of a bow to the lid. Um, but, you know, it probably dates to about 1800, 1780, something like that. Um, the drawer, got the original metal loop handles. Feels a bit stuck shut, but probably a little warped or something like that. But still, character piece of furniture. Moving backwards, driving the, photography, the uh, camera lady backwards. Um, how about this, 1179. French provincial carved beach. Look, carved with a nice little cherub up there on the cresting rail. Old wormholes, but not active, please note. Uh, and then with these cranking, cranking wrought iron handles so you can drop it back. Got the original parcel gilt leather upholstery, a bit tatty there. Uh, over here, um, you can see how cold it is. The lady in the middle there, lot 1047. She's modern bronze, 
Um, but, uh, you know, you could stand that out in the garden and it wouldn't do it any harm. She stands within tree circle bench, which I'm trying to find the number on. Here it is. Lot number. No, that's not it. So I'll find it. I can't find it. We'll find it and we'll put it on the video and we'll do it as a featured lot so you'll know what it is. Um, but the last time we saw one of these, it went pretty well. And though it's got sort of some nice uh, weathering and verdigree, it's basically in good order. So I suspect that to be reasonably popular. Uh, as, as might this provincial table bit. It's a little bit heavy underneath. I don't think it's as old as it wants to be. But it's a lovely big thick slab of burwood on top, lot 1087. Carrying on down, we've got beds, we've got Queen Anne style chairs, we've got modern bronze models of parrots. Uh, there are work tables. These are, these are still incredibly inexpensive. We've been seeing these selling this morning for under £100 quite often. This one's little bit better in, uh, in a sort of satin wood, but still, those are not expensive at present. Garden bench is still doing well. Uh, there's a um, sort of reconstituted stone or composition bust here. In fact, I think he's got a touch of resin about him. Yeah, he's resin. He's got stone ground up with the plastic resin. Lot 1012, but he's got the look and you won't have to pay the price of marble, so I suppose many respects, that's a, that's a bonus. Uh, we've got Indian carved wood tables. There's one down there with elephant's heads as its legs. Um, there's a big gilt chair up here. There's another tall poster bed uh, in brass. Again, a little bit narrow, um, but fairly steady frame upon it. Uh, there's a lovely great big bench at the back here, about 1030. Uh, again, slightly wobbly. Seems to be the theme this week, wobbly furniture at Gorringes. Um, nice clean pine chest there. It's went for the children's room or something like that. Drawers are flowing nicely. Got 11, 14, probably 100 pounds or so. Not expensive. Um, how about this? A D-shaped desk, Edwardian. Satin wood banded with a bow front to it. Nice, um, be made. You know, all, all clean and ready to go. Deeply out of fashion at the moment. So won't be expensive, but will be a good quality piece of furniture and will give you years of use. Nice small garden bench here, size is everything, and small is often more. This is 1121 with these nice little squared finials. And again, seat's a bit wobbly, sticking with the wobbly theme, carrying on down. Uh, how about that? That's an early chest of drawers there. Um, it's that sort of crossover period. It's, it's, the, the main body is in oak, and then we've got walnut uh, drawers with this boxwood stringing. Um, the style feet, so that the, the, the piece of timber goes straight down here and carries right down to the foot. That's the style foot. It's sort of, think of uh, coffers of construction and the like, sort of indicating its early origins. Uh, and then inside, filled with um, all sorts of detritus, if you want to get um, why do people fight um, brochure or all sorts of strange things in there have been left in it, just to add to the curiosity value, no doubt. Um, otherwise, earlier. Uh, Square piano, again, not the easiest of sellers, but it's quite a pretty one here. And we've got the original maker's name, Georgius Gacha, by the looks of it, of Lundini, in 1792, no doubt, no, no less. Corner of Edward Street, Wardour Street, 1792. And you still get a tune of sorts out of it. Uh, a little bit wobbly, of course, like everything else this week. Uh, that was like 1131. They get converted into desks and things, which isn't very practical easier. It's sort of almost better to keep it for what it is and enjoy it and have it as a curiosity. Uh, I'm running out of space here. I can't go much further. Uh, that's quite a nice whatnot for you in a good rich flame mahogany with the brass mounts, galleried. Lot 1133 It's a Regency piece, I suppose, about 1830, something like that. Um, not too wobbly, quite well solidly put together. Uh, and, and then next to them, two pairs of big chunky garden urns. Spring is coming, I'm sure. The uh, brambles are, are growing well in the warehouse. Spring is coming, so 11.32, nice big pair of composition pots. Uh, these are 10.93, these cast iron urns, always ever popular, probably three, four hundred pounds for those. So have a good look at the website. There's all sorts of interesting things here. I'm sort of looking across over there, thinking, what's that? So I'm going to slide around here and look at lot 1075, which is, well, I can only assume some sort of game. 
with lots of inscriptions around it. We've got the king here. We've got the Tudor rose in the middle and it's inscribed in sort of old English. So Obus is the roundy table of King Arthur, etc. It continues on round. So um, perhaps these are the Knights of the Round Table inscribed all around it. I'm not sure. I haven't Stop to look at it before I talk to you about it, and you may well know more than I do. Perhaps it's just a, a, a lazy Susan and one um, with interesting decoration. Anyway, there's always something curious to look at, as is this. Nearly missed it, like 10.99. Look at that, 1950s um, Finnish, Scandinavian, um, with this lovely uh, ceramic crackle glaze top. I think there's a drawer that size, that side. It's sitting on rather elegant legs. So, there we go, there's a slide, not a drawer, there's a slide, each side of it. So uh, one could have one's smorgasbord or what have you upon it. So an interesting 1950s piece there, he said, looking at it dated 1936. An interesting <laughs> 1930s piece there that, that is reminiscent of some of the 50s pieces, but is ah. earlier and more interesting. So always something good to find here, isn't there? From Scandinavian 1930s tables to King Arthur's Lazy Susan, it's all in the warehouse, so do come along and have a good look if you can. Uh, otherwise, have a good look at the website. Remind you, consignment for the spring sale we are taking in just for the next couple of weeks or so, uh, putting together that sale with a nice catalogue and what have you. So if you've got something in mind, come along, bring it along, give us a call, or have a look at the website. Very easy link to, to connect through and load your photos and send them to us. So either way, we'd love to see your things and uh, get back to you with estimates and hopefully put them in sale for you. There's some good things building up for that sale. Uh, so uh, yes, a couple of weeks for that. Otherwise, enjoy the sale, have a good look at it, and we hope to see you in the room. Thank you.